When it comes to African clothing brands taking over, we can attribute it to three monumental moments. These three moments are responsible for taking an industry that was struggling to now exporting over $15.5 billion worth of textile, clothing, and footwear. But before we get into them, I want to start this off by telling you something that Gen Zs may not know about. Do you know there was a time when it wasn't considered cool to be African? Yes, there was a time when it wasn't considered cool to be African. And this same sentiment also manifested itself in fashion. You see, back then, it was okay to overlook the vibrant patterns and the rich textures that are stable in African fashion. The mainstream narrative often sidelined these unique styles in favor of a westernized aesthetics. Naturally, this led to a lack of representation and a lack of appreciation of African designs on the global fashion stage. Until... Now for us is the time because there is a light on on our culture, on what we, on our creativity. Because uh, finally, what people they they say they seeing the the creativity from Africa. First up, the Ankara fabric got a modern makeover. Designers started creating pieces that were not just traditional, but they were also trendy. We saw African brands in the UK and in the US, such as Grassfields and Diana, innovate the way we wore those outfits. They mixed the Ankara with other materials. They played around with the cuts and the silhouettes. And suddenly, these dresses were popping up everywhere on social media. Celebrities began rocking them on the red carpets and Instagram influencers were all about the Ankara life. It was all about the Ankara life in this moment. I'll say this revolution happened around 2016 to 2017. That's what I will say. And it was fresh. It was vibrant and it paid homage to the African heritage whilst also being utterly fashionable. But then, in the middle of all of these revamped and colored dresses came Black Panther. And so it has remained, uh, remained independent uh, over the years. It's a secret society that nobody knows about. And so Nakia's job is to go out into the world, observe what's going on, and report back to Wakanda so that they can remain on top without anyone knowing that they're on top. Now, there has in the past been a degree of frustration about how Africa, the continent, is portrayed on screen and cinema. Do you think that this is a sign that we are moving, there's a shift in how we view Africa? What Black Panther shows us is that there is a whole host of people who get the misrepresentation that Africa has had and who um, respect the continent, want to reinvestigate the continent and re-represent the continent. And that's important to me because I'm all about the demystification of the African continent. You get to decide what kind of king you are going to be. If there's anything like the right place and the right time for African fashion, it will be Black Panther movie in 2018. You see, this movie didn't just break box office records. That's one thing. This movie also shattered stereotypes when it comes to Africa. I mean, the costumes, the way they spoke, everything was inspired by different African cultures, of course, showing the whole continent in the movie. But the way that people in the Western world saw Africa changed in one movie. We saw people getting dressed in African outfits, going out to the cinemas to watch the movie. We saw them come out of the cinemas wanting to emulate the Wakanda lifestyle. They wanted to speak like Wakanda. They wanted to be like Wakanda. They wanted to dress like Wakanda. It was a powerful moment and it pushed African fashion into the limelight. It made it synonymous with pride and strength. Black Panther was really, really, really a revolutionary moment. Anyway, we didn't need a movie to show how great we are, but the movie helped shift the way that we were perceived. But I wouldn't say that Black Panther is the most powerful moment. The more powerful moment than Black Panther the movie is Afrobeats. 
DM me this style. Yeah. Um, I my stylist came up with this word, and it's um, Afropolitan. It's a merge of Africanness, if I put it that way, Africanness and Western style. You see, in business, we have something called emerging markets. An emerging market in an, is an economy that's in transition from being a low-income, less developed country to a modern, industrialized, and a higher standard of a living nation. And do you know what emerging markets attract? Well, I'll let you be the judge of that. But what I can say is that Afrobeats have taken over the world by storm. In recent years, we have seen Thames become the first Nigerian to be nominated for an Academy Award. We've seen Thames also win a Grammy. We've seen Bonoboy and Remo perform at the NBA halftime. We've seen Tiwa Savage's royal performance. We've seen Bonoboy sold out shows in London and New York. And then the Grammy have also introduced a new category for Best African Music Performance. And with these new ceilings from Afrobeats, the fashion has also followed. Because you can't love Afrobeats and not love the fashion as well. The fashion hangs with that. And Afrobeats continues to break the barrier so people are embracing the fashion that it comes with as well. These three moments, these three moments were monumental. They were so monumental. But I'll be remiss if I don't say that the African clothing fashion is still embracing some challenges. I'll put a report in here by Semaphore to show some of the challenges that they have been faced. But as they say, fashion mirrors a society's cultural values, the prevailing era, and the collective expression of its people. If that's the case, then Africa has nothing to worry about.